Hi, this is Pastor Morris here on Gospel Talk. We bring you the gospel of Jesus Christ in a simple, understandable manner. Kindly like, comment, share, and subscribe. And let's spread the good news of Jesus Christ together. Today, I want to discuss reconciliation. What does it mean to be reconciled? The Bible clearly teaches that one of the things that God was doing in Christ Jesus was to reconcile us to himself. Reconciliation means that there was enmity, means that there was once hostility. And that is what uh, sin had brought. Sin had brought enmity. We who were created in the image of God initially started uh, to be uh, rebellious. We became hostile to God. According to Romans 8, the Bible says that the natural mind is hostile to the things of God. We were not able to even keep the law of the Lord. We we kept on going astray. As the Bible says that everyone has uh, gone astray and has gone astray and has, uh, you know, gone out on his own way. And we have left the Lord. And therefore, if you read the Old Testament, prophets of the Old Testament, the many preachers of the Old Testament, their greatest work was to keep on bringing people back to God. Of course, you remember Elijah, you know, keep on bringing people back to God. And uh, the sin brought a separation uh, between uh, people and God, that there couldn't be that close, intimate relationship between people and God. But when Jesus came, he came with a reason. He came for a purpose, and that purpose is to reconcile us uh, uh, to God. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, In verse 17, I read, it says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Now, all things are of God who has reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, not imputing their trespasses to them, and has committed to us the word of reconciliation. The Bible clearly tells us that if you are in Christ Jesus, you are a new creation. Your life is totally new. You are a new person that has not existed before. The only thing old about you is the body you are in. But your spirit becomes new and your mind requires renewal through the word of God. The Bible says because of that separation, because of that enmity and hostility, God took the initiative and gave the means of reconciliation. And the means of peace, the means of reconciliation or reconciling the world to himself was Jesus Christ. The Bible says that God was in Christ, dwelling in Christ. Jesus Christ is God. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. The Word was God. He became flesh and dwelt among us. So Christ was God or is God. So when he came, it is God in Christ reconciling us to himself, paying the price. Yeah, to bring us back to himself because God desires a relationship with people. We are created to relate with God. His spirit yearns for us and therefore he reconciled us to that relationship so that we can relate with him. Now that means that if you are a new creation and you are a new person in Christ Jesus and you've been reconciled to God, what is the extent of that reconciliation? Does God accept you now and then after some time he doesn't accept you? Are you reconciled today and then tomorrow you are not reconciled? No. Everything that Jesus did by his sacrifice is eternal. He has established it. And therefore right now we have an unbroken fellowship with the Father. We have been fully, completely reconciled. There is no one thing that the devil can point uh, uh, to in your life that would make you not a friend of God. 
the friendship, the peace, the harmony has been brought back by Jesus Christ. And that is the message that we've been given to the world, to tell the world that God is no longer angry. God is no longer looking for an opportunity to curse people, to judge people, to destroy people. No, God has reconciled the world to himself. What do you mean, Pastor Morris? I'll give you a story as, as, as a sign of. I'll give you a story that I, I read in a book, very interesting story. There was this man in, the, in America, in the States, who was arrested because he had, uh, uh, you know, hijacked a mail van and killed a person, and he was guilty. And uh, he was found to, the evidence, of course, was against him overwhelmingly, and therefore he was to die. But somehow uh, uh, it was prevailed upon the president to, um, uh, through presidential clemency or prerogative, to pardon this man. This man was pardoned. But when the, uh, uh, the letter of pardon signed by the president that this man should not die, this man should not spend his, uh, his time in prison anymore, he is free to go, uh, when that letter was brought to him, he refused to accept it. He refused to go free. I don't know uh, whether he had a death wish or he just wanted to die. He had uh, given up on life, uh, but uh, he refused to accept the pardon. And although Jesus has died and God has forgiven and reconciled the whole world to himself, there are people out there that are still not accepting his pardon. They are not receiving that reconciliation. Anyway, long story short, it had to go back to court to discover if a president uh, uh, declares pardon for somebody and the person refuses to accept it, what needs to be done? Can that person be set free by force? Can that person be coerced to be free? And it was discussed in the Supreme Court and they decided you can't actually force somebody to go free. If they refuse to accept the pardon, then the sentence has to be meted on them. And that's what happened to this gentleman. Sadly, he had to be executed and he died, not because there was no way out, but because uh, he refused to accept the pardon. Today, I want to ask you to kindly accept the reconciliation God offers, that the reconciliation and the forgiveness and the pardon, the full pardon of sin, that God has already offered through Jesus Christ, that he sent Jesus Christ to die for the sins you should have died for, to carry the sentence and to bear that sentence. The full weight of justice came upon him. That weight was supposed to come upon you, but Christ took it on our behalf. Now, all we have to do is accept what he has done, and then we live in the reality of reconciliation and peace with God. God bless you so much. If you'd like to commit and to open up your heart to Jesus Christ, kindly repeat after me. Father, thank you so much for your love. I have heard that you have reconciled me to yourself. Today, I accept that peace. I accept that reconciliation. I accept that forgiveness. And I allow Jesus to be my savior and my Lord from today henceforth. God bless you so much and like, comment, share, subscribe. See you next time on Gospel Talk. God bless you.